Elizabeth Stokey, Talk, The Science of Conversation. Are you ready to unravel the complexities of human conversation and sharpen your communication skills? Embark on this journey through Talk, The Science of Conversation by Elizabeth Stokey as you discover the significance of conversational turns, the power of initial inquiries, the role of pauses and filler words, the impact of body language, and the effectiveness of choice architecture in your everyday interactions. Improve not only your ability to express yourself and build rapport, but also enhance your experience with service industries, and your ability to overcome challenges in making and accepting offers. The Art of Turn-Taking in Conversations Conversations are like projects that involve completing conversational tasks through a series of turns. A turn refers to a grammatically coherent unit of talk that is followed by specific nonverbal cues. Turns are organized in adjacency pairs, and conversation essentially involves turn taking. However, turn taking is not as simple as it sounds, and it can give rise to common conversational problems. The end of a turn is a potential conversational minefield as misread cues can create an impression that you're not listening. Moreover, some turns have an artificial ending that invites short responses rather than lengthy anecdotes. Talking out of turn can also create a poor conversational impression. By understanding the art of turn-taking, one can master the skill and have smoother conversations. The Purpose of Initial Inquiries Initial inquiries have become so ingrained in our daily conversations that they feel automatic. While they may not be information-seeking questions, they serve a purpose in building rapport with our conversational partner. However, in service industries, like retail, initial inquiries can backfire and create a negative impression. Salespeople can use the initial inquiry in a genuine way by using it out of sequence. Forgoing or insincerely using initial inquiries can create a poor impression. Unspoken language in conversations. Conversational pauses, filler words like, um, and, oh, and even the use of, so, reveal a lot about the speaker and the direction of the conversation. These seemingly meaningless words and moments actually serve as clues to understanding the true intentions of the speaker. Contrary to popular belief, pauses in speech generally indicate a forthcoming dispreferred response rather than the speaker processing information. Similarly, um, can signify unexpected information or a conversation turn that wasn't anticipated. O, oh, indicates new information has been processed, while, so, is a signpost signaling the speaker's desired direction for the conversation. Understanding these unspoken language cues is crucial for interpreting conversations accurately. The Misconception of Body Language Many believe that the majority of communication is made up of body language, but this is a common misconception. The 93% statistic is taken out of context from a 1971 study by psychologist Albert Morabian, which was limited in scope. While nonverbal cues play a significant role in face-to-face -face communication, gestures can be just as ambiguous as words. The truth is that we communicate in a multimodal manner, both verbally and nonverbally, and it's best to appraise body language in this same context. So, while words may not always speak louder than actions, they can significantly impact the actions and responses we produce. Words matter. The words we use and how we present choices can shape our outcomes. This concept, known as choice architecture, can be applied to everyday conversations. Hotels have long tried to encourage guests to reuse towels with signs in their bathrooms. However, appeals to the environment have proven ineffective. A 2007 U.S. study demonstrated that a simple change to the wording of the sign could result in substantial behavioral changes. When the sign appeals to social norms by stating, most guests choose to reuse their towels, guests are more likely to follow suit. The process of designing the ways in which choices are presented to others, known as choice architecture, demonstrates the power of words. If you find yourself met with a no when asking for something, a change in the choice architecture of your request might be all you need to get a yes. A study on doctor-patient communication found that asking, is there anything else I can help you with today, 
resulted in only 50% of patients bringing up another issue. However, when doctors used the phrase, is there some other issue you'd like to address, 90% of patients responded positively. The use of any is often associated with negativity and inviting negative responses, while some has the opposite effect. Switching one word can make a significant difference, emphasizing the importance of mindful communication. The questions we use and how we frame them can shape outcomes and the level of service we receive. As such, the importance of choice architecture in everyday conversations should not be underestimated. The Power of Asking In this book summary, we learn that getting what we want is often dependent on how we ask for it. The way we design our questions can reveal how entitled we feel to receive the service we're asking for. The clearer the question, the stronger the sense of entitlement we create, and the more likely we are to receive the service we're asking for. Effective service anticipates the requests concealed in the customer's original closed question and meets them. Mastering the art of accepting and making offers. Making and accepting offers can be a tricky conversation to navigate. However, with the right strategies, it doesn't have to be a minefield. When accepting an offer, it's essential to pause briefly before accepting to show that you're not taking it for granted. With more complex offers, confirm the offer's intention before accepting it. On the other hand, making offers can be complicated, as we may feel forced into offering something we don't want to do. This is where recruiters come in, placing a mental burden on us to make offers. To nudge the burden back gently, respond to a request without driving it forward. By identifying these problems, making and eliciting offers becomes much easier. The problem with role plays. Role plays and simulations are commonly used in corporate training to improve communication strategies. However, conversational analysts have found that they are counterproductive because they create an artificial conversational context. In actual customer service contexts, employees draw on their own conversational toolkit while in role plays, they try to match their conversational turns to policy or even a customer service script. The results of comparing role plays to real conversations have found several critical differences in content and tone. For example, conversational analysts found that closed questions were often more effective in eliciting useful information during interrogations, while the phrasing, in the best interests of the child, used by neonatal doctors shut down opportunities for questions and led to conflict between parents and medical staff. Therefore, role plays create artificial insights into workplace communication strategy, and conversation analysis provides a more accurate picture. You've now delved into the fascinating world of conversation and examined essential components of our daily interactions. Having understood the importance of taking conversational turns, you're better equipped for smoother and more efficient communication. Initial inquiries may seem meaningless, but their role in building rapport and signaling interest is crucial. Pauses and filler words like, um, and o oh, also carry significant meaning, and the role of body language remains essential in shaping perceptions. Hone your skills in choice architecture and question design to positively influence responses and services. And remember, real-life situations are always more insightful than role plays for understanding effective communication.